to uh, to work on the banjo solo, but I can flub my way through it, but it's not exactly the way that Earl Scruggs played it in 1950, but uh, it'll do. All right, let's start this up. It is seven o'clock and it is Wednesday night, Mountain uh, MDT. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome, Niall. Uh, Niall has a PDF of the uh, of the break, the banjo break. Sorry, let's start this officially. Uh, welcome Bluegrass 101 Wednesday night jam. We are doing the song Old Salty Dog Blues. Now, this is a song that was... Uh, well, at least dates back to the 1900s. It has all sorts of different verses. It was uh, recorded by, uh, it's, a, it's a standard in jazz. It's a standard in blues. And of course, it's a standard in bluegrass. Um, there's a Mississippi John Hurt version of it. There is a Lead Belly version of it. The bluegrass version is based on a recording by the Morris Brothers. Um, from 1938, and even the the uh, the lyrics from that version became the standard uh, version for the lyrics for Old Salty Dog Blues. Um, sometimes called just Salty Dog Blues, sometimes just called Salty Dog. Um, I, my personal belief is originally they called uh, they re when people asked they would say that Salty Dog was a food or a type of uh, kind of like a hush puppy. Um, a breaded deep fried food or a drink, a salty dog drink. But if you listen to some of the older lyrics, especially some of the uh, more risque lyrics, uh, it's pretty clear that it is someone's love. They're, they're called a salty dog. Um, but we're going to do the 1950 version uh, that was recorded by Flat and Scruggs. Now it is an extremely interesting um, interesting version of Old Salty Dog Blues because, or it's an interesting song from the Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs catalog because Lester Flat does not sing lead on the original recording. It's Benny Sims, the fiddle player at the time, um, and the, the other bandmates are doing harmonies, which is really, really cool to hear this different version with like Earl Scruggs, Lester Flat, uh, everybody's still playing the original. Uh, the original song. Now, with all that being said, let's go right into the chords. Now, the chords are different in this song than standard progression of almost all other bluegrass songs that have the one, four, and five pattern. This has one, six, then two, five chord, and then one. So in this case, we're doing it in the key of G. So it goes G, E, then A, and then to D, back to G. So uh, it's a different chord progression, which creates a very, very unique sound. And it's, uh, it's a great, uh, it's just a fun chord progression to go through. So let's learn the song. We'll go through it once, no breaks and uh, sing along. Uh, we're gonna do it about this beat. I still wanna hear that back beat. So, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick. Standing on the corner with the low down blues, great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. This here cell, I know you run down stocking in a worn out shoe. Honey, let me be your salt dog. Let me be your salt dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salt dog. Down in the wildwood, sitting all along, finger on the trigger in an hour. Hog. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at 
it all Honey, let me be your salty dog Pulled the trigger and the gun set go Shot dropped over in Mexico Honey, let me be your salty dog Let me be your salty dog Or I won't be your man at all Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. So, uh, once you get that chord progression, G to E to A. just repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. Um, so what makes this song interesting? Why would uh, it become a standard in so much music? Well, there's one interesting thing that Benny Sims is doing vocally and something that the song is doing as well. And this was in the original uh, Morse Brothers recording as well. He goes, standing on the corner with the low down blue. That note is this note. Standing on a corner with the low down blues. So it's actually like he's playing C. Standing on a corner with the low down blues. Great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. But instead of going to a four chord, he's going to a six chord. Standing on a corner with the low down blues. And this is a really discordant note. This against an E, it sounds, uh, let's see if I can, uh, I need more fingers. There we go. That sounds just, but it works. It makes it interesting. Standing on the corner with the low down blues, great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be so dull. All the rest is basically very, very straightforward in regards to that's an A and then D it's doing a flatted seven so not going so but <laughs> this is the interesting thing when they go to the choruses they don't he doesn't go down so he goes, let me be your salty dog, or I won't be. So it holds for a longer, it holds on that note. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be. And then resolves on the A. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Down in the wild, what's sitting on the log? So remember, on the verses, you resolve that. You resolve that odd note to the uh, to the B, but on the choruses, you stay on that discordant C. Standing on a corner with the low down blues, great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. So. Let's get that and really, really listen for that note. Make sure that on the choruses, you are staying on that note and on the verses, you're getting off that note. Okay, so, uh, and then we're gonna add the breaks here as well. So uh, break after each of the, uh, of the choruses. So. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> That's very sweet. Uh, okay. Standing on the corner. Well, one, two, three, four. Standing on the corner with the low down blues. A great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog. Or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. 
instrumental. relatively easy but they sang this song in three-part harmony and the three-part harmony because it is doing these strange chord progressions makes for a very interesting um, tenor and baritone that we're going to add so the tenor is singing the third sometimes the fourth note <laughs> um, yeah uh, sometimes the third sometimes the fourth note above the uh, lead note so if the lead is going standing on, a, standing on a corner with the low down blues standing on a corner with the low down blues now they're going down this uh, the lead is going down this weird one note but you if you're singing the tenor going to stay on the the actual root, but you're going to stay on that E, so it's going to go standing, standing on a corner with the low down blues, great big hole, which is a weird, that's a weird jump to go to. Typically, if you're here on C, you're going to go either to this note or this note, the seventh, uh, the C or the D, but you're going in between those. Stand, stand on the corner with the low down blues. Great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. And, um, let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Um, and I just realized I did the, uh, the, the tenor for the entire first verse, but you don't do that. You only do it for Honey, Let Me Be Your Salty Dog. So it goes, if I'm singing tenor, Honey, let me be your salty dog. Salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your 
saw the dog. So, we're going to use my handy dandy favorite little program called Audacity. Uh, Audacity is a free program that you can download. They give me no money for promoting it, but I love it. Uh, so, I can record the lead. We're going to record the lead here. One, two, three, four. Standing on a corner with the low down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me Dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let that ring out properly. Now we're going to go back. I'm going to add a track. We're going to sing the tenor to that. So if we remember, if I'm singing the tenor, that's the note that I want to start with. Let me be. Oh, actually, it's, it's honey. Honey, honey, honey. Honey, let me be your salty dog. That's the note that I'm starting on because it, uh, I'm not singing all of the, yeah, you know what I mean. Okay. Record the lead here. Sing the tenor. One, two, three, four. Standing on a corner with the low down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me it bugs me because I missed the first note. So we're going to go back. That's why we practice. Because <laughs> I'm thinking I got to be in D. Okay, so we have, as soon as I do a little bit of manipulation here, that looks about right. Sitting on the corner with the low down blues, great thing. Almost. Sitting on the corner with the I love Audacity, but for some reason, it is just not exactly right. Pretty close. Two, three, four. Standing on the corner with the low-down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be a salty dog. There we go. Okay. So I have the lead and I have the tenor and that leaves just one part, which is the baritone. So if I'm going to sing the baritone part, this note is taken. Uh, let's start on the, yeah, we'll do the. Uh, Let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog. So I'm going to have to start on this note. Let me be your salty dog, which is a nasty, nasty, because you're just going up a half step. 
Let me be your salted dog, or I won't be your man at all. So it's going. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let's do that again. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. So let's try adding that. Think of that note. Let me be your salty dog. Just a half step. Da, da, da. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. And that's why this song is very interesting. Because the lead is going up this half step as well. The, Tanner is going up a full step. You are going up a semi-step if you're singing baritone. So cool. Okay. Two, three, four. Standing on the corner with a low down blues. A great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog. Or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. I always forget that I don't start on that, so I have to think about Honey, let me be your salty dog. That's the note that I'm going to start on. Honey, think of it in my chest. Honey, two, three, four. Standing on the corner with a low down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Okay, so those are the three parts to Salty Dog Blues. Now that we have all the parts, let's do the whole song. Um, I am just going to be singing the tenor for it. So, for those that are listening, this is going to be me strumming a whole lot because the breaks are a verse and a chorus and uh, all I do is I come in on the very last line of the verses and then the full choruses but I'm going to allow for that stand on the corner with the low down blues great big hole in the bottom of my shoes you guys are singing that part I'm just playing rhythm guitar and um, singing the tenor but I'm going to record it. Okay. Oh, one last thing too. We're going to do an intro on it. So, one, two, three, ba dum bum bum. But we're just going to do uh, just a verse. For the for the intro and then we're going to go right into singing i will give cues for the singing i'll also holler out instrumentals like i'll be going instrumental break to give you a little bit of a clue as to when to do instrumental breaks and i hope i get this all completely right i'm not guaranteeing i will get it right but i will do my best that's why we practice okay one two three Intro bump bump bump. Thank you. 
Okay, so <laughs> thanks, Sloan. Sloan is watching me play. This is uh, not as exciting as it could be. It's but it's great to for playing along. Uh, so we have a tenor part, and we have a guitar laid down. But let's add a little bit of banjo breaks to it. So, as a banjo player, I can do, let's tune first, So, as a banjo player, I can do this closed G position, right? And then I can switch up to the E, which is just this very, very short little transition up here. And then a short little transition to the A. So I can go... So it's a really, really nice little... Now, when I'm doing my break, because I have to hit this... So I'm doing... I'm, I'm hitting this note just like this. So that's just going up to this, the G. And then this weird second, fr uh, 14th fret, 13th fret here, and then 11th fret. Back to the D. So. I'm not going to take the first break. I'm going to do the intro. I'm going to take the second break, though, on this. And hopefully, I'm going to be singing the baritone. So it's... Honey, let me be your salt. Honey, honey, let me be your salt dog. Let me be your salt dog, or I won't be your man at all. Right, okay. Should be good. That's why we practice. That's right. Okay. One, two, three, intro bump. <laughs> Let me be 
your soda dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your soda dog. That is Salty Dog Blues. Now, uh, I know there's some female singers out there, and we were doing it in the key of G, but uh, why don't we do it? If we're doing the song in the key of G, and I am a female singer, then likely I'm going to sing the song in the key of C or the key of D. So, if I were so inclined, I would take and capo at the fifth fret and play this. But that's no fun because we should be able to figure out how to transpose this. So if I'm in the key of C, um, so if I'm in the key of C, uh, yeah. And then the next note is going to be D. So it's going to go So the four chords in this particular song and I <laughs> I did not have a chance to uh to transpose it beforehand so I'm doing it in my head and it's breaking my head a little bit. So, it's key of C the next chord, which is the sixth chord, is going to be A. Then the two chord, which is just one up from C, is going to be the D. So it's going to go C, A, D, G. Now let's see if I can actually sing it. Stand on the corner with the low-down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your soul to go. So if I'm singing harmony on this, I'm going to have to go way up here. Let me be your soul dog. Let me be your soul dog. Run me your dog. Let me be your soul dog. 
but no one wants to hear me sing that high up so I'm going to have to drop it down a full octave so instead of singing this note I'm going to be singing um, Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. So, going to do in the key of C. As I said, if you're not comfortable remembering what chords those are, you can capo at the fifth fret, play G, E, A shape, and D shape, or it does work quite well in the key of C. So C, A, D, and then G, C. So same thing, we're going to allow uh, the intro. It's just gonna be one verse and then gonna go right into singing. And again, I'm not a female singer. Uh, and if you have a higher male tenor voice or an actual lower voice, you can also sing this song in the key of C. So lower, it would be like, Stand on the corner with the low-down blues, Great big hole in the bottom of my shoes, Honey, let me be your salty dog. Okay, so, one, two, three, intro. to sing that song in the key of C again if you want to sing it in the key of D as well you can capo at the second fret and play those same shapes or 
you can do D. So that is why when, uh, uh, if you've seen the sheet that I handed out, emailed to everybody, it has just the one and the six and the two and the five. That refers to, it's called the Nashville numbering system. And the root chord is one, and then all the other notes are numbered towards that one. So that uh, as a session player, I'm able to quickly go, oh, I have a singer here. I'm not going to be singing this song. There, she's not, or he is not going to be singing it in the G, they're gonna try it in A. Okay, well, I don't have to worry about trying to transpose it in my head. I can just go, oh, I'm doing the one chord, this is the sixth chord to A, this is, yeah. So that's the Nashville numbering system and why it's used in studios. And uh, let's go back to the key of G and talk about uh, some of the nuances in this song to make it just a hair better. So, um, standing on the corner with the low down blues, great big hole. So, most people, when they see a line in uh, a song, they're going to end at that line. So, they go, standing on the corner with the low down blues, great big, and they do this pause, a breath on blues. You don't want to do that. We want to link blues and uh. So, it goes, Stand on the corner with the low down blues, great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your soldier dog. And you're going to hold it for um, for full the full four notes for the end of dog. And I'm doing this whole whole uh, verse in one breath. Stand on the corner with the low down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be. Let me be your solid dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your solid dog. Now, you might not have the lung power to be able to do that, but don't take your breaths in those standard spots right at the end of the lines. You can go, stand on a corner with the low down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your solid dog. So you can do a short little breath after honey. Honey, let, honey, let me be. Or you can do it after honey, let me be. Honey, let me be your solely dog. So I did a breath before uh, let. I did a breath before me. I did a breath before be there. Honey, let, honey, let me be your solely dog. Honey, let, honey, let me be your solely so stand on the corner with the low down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your soldier dog. Let me be your soldier dog, or I won't be a man at all. Honey, let me be soldier dog. So I'm doing these short little breaths to get enough lung power to be able to push as much as I want. But ultimately, this is a pretty quick song. You should be able to do a full verse. Stand on the corner with the low down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. However, if you start to lose breath on dog, what happens is your note will go flat. Uh, your vocal folds are, it's a reeded instrument. It's like a clarinet um, or... Uh, a bassoon. Um, so any air that's pushing through it is vibrating and causing that really nice tone to come resonate in your mouth and then get released. So if you start to not push enough air through, the note starts to go flat. If you push too much, it goes sharp. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Starts to flatten out. Um, so honey, let me be your salty dog. Better to take a little bit of a breath and be able to have enough of that note on that last dog to
to be able to sing it fully and not have it go flat on you. Stand on the corner with the low-down blues, a great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salt dog. Let me be your salt dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salt dog. Now with dog too, as soon as you hit that G dog, that ends it. Uh, G has no like g g g g g. It uh, you're stopping the airflow enough that you can't really hold that note. So if I'm doing, honey, let me be your salty dog. I'm not even hitting the G. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Same with all. Um, all, I'm not going to end the L. As soon as I bring up the, the as soon as I make that L sound, L, I'm locking, uh, I'm, I'm covering up a lot of that vocal resonance. I'm blocking that airflow. It's like taking a guitar and plugging the hole and then playing and wondering why I'm not getting the right tone or the right sound out of it. Well, it's because you've plugged you've you disrupted that airflow so finding that nice uh placement that you can put that o on dog so do do right all of those as soon as i start to close my mouth out the noise and the resonance isn't as nice however if my mouth is way open dog it doesn't have a nice resonant either. Um, it would be like taking the whole top of this guitar off. There's no sort of overtones that happen. There's no none of this really, really nice uh, confined area. So there is a perfect place for O in dog where you kind of want to hold. Honey, let me be your salty dog. That's probably about where I find it to have the nice resonance, the nicest. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. But people have their own little preference on that. And some people just have a more natural, kind of a tighter... Tony Rice has a little bit of tighter, tighter tone to him. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. But that is going to provide a different tone. It's not going to sound the same. So really, your, your lip placement is just as, like, how you form those words is just as important as the shape of your guitar or the shape of the banjo or whatever, finding that tone that you really like um, is, is really important. Standing on the corner with the low down blues, lake big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. So think about on the next time that we're singing this, we're going to sing it all the way through, and I'll sing the lead this time. Um, so if anybody wants to practice their harmonies, they can practice their harmonies against the lead. Uh, so we're going to do the full breaks again. Going to do it in the key of G with the guitar one. And we're going to do an intro and we're going to do the instrumental breaks for those that are playing along. And let's do and sing this song again. One, two, three. Instrumental breaks. Standing on a corner with the low damn blues, great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. It's smell great. Look at yourself, I know you run down 
knocking in a worn out shoe Honey, let me be your salty dog Let me be your salty dog Or I won't be your man at all Honey, let me be your salty dog Sitting on a log, finger on the trigger, and an eye on the hog. Honey, let me be a salt dog. Let me be a salt dog, or I won't be a man at all. Honey, let me be a salt dog. One last thing I'm going to mention before I call her an evening. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions and you're listening along, uh, ask me. Uh, you can drop a, a line in the chat there, or you can uh, write a comment there on Facebook. And I'm kind of watching both at the same time, so I am paying attention. I'm trying not to ignore you. Um, um, so the last thing that I'm going to mention is on this song, you can do sevenths, right? You can go stand on the corner with a load of ambush, great big hole in the bottom of the shoe. Honey, let me be a salt dog. And it sounds okay, and definitely in a blues, if I was doing this in a blues version. be doing sevenths all over the place but in bluegrass you're allowing the singer and you're allowing the other instruments to do the sevenths so as a guitar player i'm going to be playing all the major chords with no sevenths associated with them so stand on the corner with a low down great big hole on the bottom of my shoes honey let me be so dog especially on that honey let me be because the singer is already doing that seventh, um, for it to have a guitar doing the seventh with the singer doing the seventh, it just becomes overkill. So we want to allow um, those nuances and those resolves, those uh, the the um, the tension notes, and that's a tension note, and we're wanting that to really stand out, but not be completely overpowered so it doesn't even sound like a tension note anymore. So it's honey let me be so dumb. and stand on the corner with the low down blues. Now you don't want to do that seventh because the person is resolving that. So you if you're doing a uh, if you do a seventh there you're you're taking away that interesting note that they're dropping there so it's allowing the person who's doing the instrument break the it's allowing the singer to create that tension by providing the uh the note that they're doing okay 
So, as a guitar player, play all the major chords. Um, as I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And that is Bluegrass 101 for the evening. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, now you know how to play Old Salty Dog Blues and hopefully know not only the lead, but also the tenor and the baritone so you can sing along. This is a classic jam song. Everybody likes to play this song because it has that weird, interesting note uh, chord progression. So it provides that cool opportunity. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, <laughs> hey, Andrew, I was wondering if you were going to tune in. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in to Bluegrass 101. Same time, same bat channel every Wednesday. Uh, and uh, we're always doing a bluegrass song. So uh, thanks so much. Hey, Michelle was tuned in as well. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, have a wonderful evening. And hopefully soon we'll be picking in person together.